<laughs> yes, I'm no longer getting married. Yes, fuck it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I've called off the wedding, everybody. Oh, God. Oh, no. Wait till after the music. Stay tuned. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh -huh. can't do it. It's a podcast, not a cast pod. Hey, phrase every day. She'll make you say, oh my God. She's got the scoop. On pop culture news, so grab a drink. It ain't what you think. It's Sarah and the crew. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, good. We're actually live. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry for Wonderful. the delay. Uh, it, it took us a hot second today. Um, you know, we podcast at a podcast village, and the Michael Mara Show, they've been gracious enough to have me on as a guest at times. They actually record lots of times right before us. So today they had some technical things. We're working on some new lighting in the studio. So we didn't uh, get to go live until a little bit later. We're normally live on Mondays and Wednesdays at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Of course, 9.30 a.m. for our West Coast fans. Thank you so much for subscribing to the Hey Phrase channel on YouTube. Everything we do, we want to bring it to you in video. In video form. Live! Live! Uh, so anyway, we have some new lighting today in the studio. I'm checking it out. I'm looking at the YouTube video. It looks good. I think it looks look great. Little, I look a little shadowy, but I feel like we can... You think can, so? Um, don't you? Do you? I, I, it's oh, incredible I that it, looks. It, it does look. It does look really good. Oh, the backlighting does look good. But I feel like you're on the, you're on a stage here. Oh, does it? It does yeah. look more stage like. I think I just have to get used to that. It looks a little bit more stage like. <laughs> Sarah's like, it looks a little shadowy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see oh the God, shadows? Yes. I think you look young. You look fit. Well, in that case, please, I'm in. <laughs> Do you just go get Botox? <laughs> Why are you bringing that up? I'm oh, sorry. Too soon. Too soon. You bitch. You bitch. First of all, I'm like the oldest person on this show. Now, I'm not, not used to being in lot. that position, I'm going to say, okay? <laughs> when I worked in radio, every guy that I worked with was like a 1,000 years old. So I was always young, spry, hot. Now the roles have reversed. You and nimble? I'm the old man on the show. <laughs> Her words she used. I was spry and nimble. I could jump over a trash can. <laughs> every, I mean, the first two guys I started working with in radio that gave me my break, Stevens and Medley, I mean, they were 60 if they were a day. And they would bring out all the old classic rock songs. I can't even name them. I didn't know any. They would play these people, and I'd oh, be like, wow. please. You're the biggest yacht rock fan of all of them. I do we were in the car, rock. and you were like, yeah, are these the Beatles? And Schmano was like, no. No, it, it, no it's Wings. <laughs> I was like, oh, th whatever. It's Paul McCartney, Beatles, Wings. It's Wings. You guys, <laughs> go check out the vlog up on the Hayfresh hey YouTube page. And just literally, we don't even care if you watch the whole thing. Go watch the whole thing. But mostly watch Shmano's dry behavior in the car. It's Wings. <laughs> no, who cares? No, seriously, it matters. It was so funny. He has the driest sense of humor. And we'll talk about this because I'm... Uh, uh, there's so many developments going on with this wedding. I thought that I was so smart. I planned this wedding in December of, of 2018. Which, if you guys know in wedding years, is like uh, two seconds. Like, it, it's no time at all. You, two seconds. People use like two years to plan their wedding. You were like, bitch, I got this. Six months. I was like, that seems an awful short <laughs> time. You're like, nope. everything's done, age. I was like, we're getting married August because I wanted everyone to come to Maine in the most beautiful month of the year, which is August. The lobster's amazing. The scenery, the boat rides, the ocean. It's gorgeous. OK. And I thought, I don't want to wait another year. 2020. I'll have oh. left him four times by then. I've got to strike <laughs> while the iron's hot. I mean, I really, that's who I am. Strike while the iron's hot. I am completely like, I mean, I'm relationship ADD. I'm life ADD. <laughs> like, I have a million thoughts going on. A million men in my mind that I've been with. I mean, I... I got to like capitalize on this while I'm in love. So I think I'm being so smart in planning this wedding for August 2010. And I'll tell you about it. We had another uh, a huge blow up yesterday, not between Dan and me, but like oh, a blow God. up I, of wedding detail. Oh, you, you can't know take you guys. it. <laughs> you can't. Take it. No, we, we entered therapy last fall after my latest, like I thought I was going to leave him for somebody else. Like, so last fall we entered therapy again and we've been great ever since. Because I'm madly That's in love with him. I you, just you truly are. Very I'm clearly, so yes. crazy about him. He's so perfect for me. But, you know, like most men, he's not exactly open and emotionally. You know, he doesn't sit down every night and he's like, Sarah, let's talk about your feelings. Like, let's check in. What was your high and low today? Like, tell me about your mom. Tell me about your like losses and your wins. I know what you need. I don't think so. He comes on and he's a best like, friend. Yeah. What I need is a best friend. Well, you, know, you know what I mean when they always say, like, your husband is not, you're not supposed to see him as your best friend. Like, your best friend, you tell everything, you, your issues. And they're supposed to be your best friend, truly. Like, the person you marry, yes. But you know when they say, like, they're like, we don't want to hear about, like, your period period woes and, like, you know, I went to the store today and I the tell clerk him was me. All that. 
He doesn't want to hear it. Because the ther- therapist says you, you actually probably should be telling them everything. Yeah, she does. She says that he's supposed to come home and tell me his stresses of soccer. I'm supposed oh. to. T- and I love talking to him about business because well, I think there. he has a really great. First of all, he never agrees with anything that I do in business. So <laughs> there. And then also it's so funny because it when we were just a throwback to our Catholic classes. When we were in our Catholic classes last Saturday, they were saying how you should not talk about your relationship to your friends and family because while you know that person so intimately, your significant other, they don't. They don't. And lots of times your parents, when you tell them this, the good and bad, they hold on to it forever. Oh, yeah. They only hold on to the bad. They yes. only hold on to the bad. You're living only this with your bad. relationship. I am true a testament to this. They only hear the bad. I'm like, Mom, but he, he took me out to dinner bought flowers. But he didn't say I love you at the end of it, right? <laughs> I'm like, what? What about the goods? They, that's so true. <laughs> right? They, that's what they, so they were telling us in the Catholic class, never talk about your spouse to your friends and family, which, which is so hard not to do, though. Hard not mm-hmm. to do. But I raised my hand and I said, well, what if, you know, your friends and family always side with your spouse? Because I'm fucking pissed off. I call my <laughs> mom. I'm like, I'm leaving Dan. She's like, why would you do that? You're never going to get anyone else. I'm like, could you ever side with me? Could you ever? My brother, my, I'm like, he's never home. I think I'm leaving him. He's never home. He works 24-7. <laughs> Seth's like, okay, you go to Whole Foods eight times a week. Um, you get Botox. <laughs> you live in this amazing apartment. Do you, what do you think? Where do you think that's coming from? The man has to work. Right. No, that's true. I'm like, you're correct, actually. I don't want to live some good in a trailer on Rustin. So, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. My family your never guys is, sides with me. Yeah, your guys' outings are Whole Foods, which is like, you know, the end-all, be-all grocery store. I, I could get I, lost in there. It's I don't know what store. we're going to do. I go every day and I buy an eighteen dollar juice. Like I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, you're just yeah. The man's got to go to work for fourteen hours. I mean, who's uh, most people make that in an, a fucking hour? I'm like, I'll have a juice. Oh, thirteen ninety nine, no problem. It's good to know what you're uh, purchasing there because I may be raising my rates. <laughs> fourteen dollars, huh? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was made up for the show. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Um, so we, well, I'll tell you about the latest in my wedding development. I really need your advice. We're in a bit of a pinch. So I stay uh, there on our YouTube because I want you to comment. Um, we're also, there's this really great Cosmo article. Um, Dan is busy today, so we couldn't call him. And I'm excited to have Travis Thomas, who co-hosts the Santana Moss show. Santana Moss, very famous former NFL player. Redskins player. He's been on this show. So Travis is going to come up because there's a great list of 14 things that apparently men really want women to do. And they say that we don't do these. And so I want to ask like a real man, I think a straight guy, like if we need to be doing this more. Yeah, I want to hear your guys' responses because some of the things on the list, we think we both do. Also, other things you would be like, no guy would want this. Like they were a little bit like too, this is going to sound sexist, but too feminine. We're going to tell you. I think so, too. I think so, too. Yeah. I really want to know. And then, of course, breaking news this morning, Beth Chapman, who is the wife of Dog the Bounty Hunter, she just passed away at 51 from her battle with lung cancer. Isn't that heartbreaking? She was in a coma for a little bit, too, right? Yes. She was mm-hmm. in a medically induced coma in Hawaii for the past couple of days. They made the announcement just like 20 minutes ago, and it was trending on, it is trending, that she passed away, which is such a bummer. They I were, love, they were love a really great couple. Great they, like, couple. Built an empire together. Built an empire. I mean, she was so badass. Massive tits. Like, Ouch. completely blonde-ass hair. Come out with a taser. She just be like, freeze, <laughs> motherfucker! And then, like, you know, she'd always have to wrestle around those tits to find the, like, the... <laughs> the handcuffs? The, the handcuffs. And then she'd, like, get them out. She'd try to wrangle them. But, you know, the tits were, like, way... It was a lot. They were all over the place. R.A.P. Beth, though. You know, I love characters on television. I really do. And they were the ultimate... Like ultimate, they were great. I feel like they were like, you know, there's a couple real standouts in reality television. The Osbournes, when Jessica Simpson, Nick Lachey had their show and she was, we, you know, was revealed she was such a moron. Chicken of the sea. (laughs) Right. They all, there were some real, and they were highlights for me because you'd never really seen this kind of bleach blonde, same hairstyle couple tracking down these, I don't even know if it was real or not, but supposedly they were people that had, you know, jumped bail. What if they were actually not convicts at all and they were just strictly actors? Like, we could audition to be on the show. I believe I would love podcasters. (laughs) They come get us. Yeah. Uh, Susie Trujillo, who we absolutely love, is on the YouTube stream. She says, I'm absolutely heartbroken over Beth Chapman dying. So sad. Uh, Liz says, AJ is so brutal. You need a best friend, Sarah. Wink face. I am not brutal. I, I do need a best friend. You know what I found out? Planning a wedding. I have no fucking friends. There you go. They've all canceled. 
And now I'm finding out people are just booking their flights to Maine. I'm like, half these people are not going to come. Uh, you know what? This is now a 160-person wedding. I guarantee you, on my big day, there'll be like 100 people because everyone's going to be like, sorry, stuck in the airport, didn't realize these tickets were going to be $1,000. Remember when I sent you an invite back in April? That's when you were supposed to book. <laughs> no, that is true. I uh, I have not purchased my flights, and yesterday I went on. They were $350, so I've decided to, I'm going to drive, and we're going to stop in Boston. It's going to be a great road trip. Is Paul going to ride up with you, Paul Wharton? He says he's going to come, but see, I, I am taking a bet today. What do you think, Jackie? Do you think he'll be there? I don't. Well, I think he'll be there, but I don't think he's driving up. I He's going to take that private jet, you know? It, right, wherever <laughs> he's going to get it, yes. <laughs> yeah, wherever he's getting it from. But I don't think he would ever not take a plane like he's, he's yeah, going no. to take a plane he'll he's take come driving. in with a private jet and then he's gonna wheel out some man in a wheelchair who's 95 years old who he claims he met on <laughs> tinder he'll be like oh okay okay he will he will he always like he's always with these older men that are flying him all over hell so like he'll be literally this man who's on oxygen will come off the plane and be like here's my plus one sweetie where'd you get this old fossil you I, know he's currently in the hamptons with who we wonder Somebody 75 and rich. I mean, he knows how to do it. He knows how to do it. Uh, when planning a wedding, you find out people's true colors, Amy says. Uh, you know what? It's sad to say that. But it's good. I think it's a lesson for me in, to showing up. Like, I think, you know, until I, and it's like everything, right? Until you walk in someone else's shoes or the experience happens to you, you never really take it in. So for me, I'm like, wow, showing up for me means so much more than people sending gifts or cards or anything like that. So now, like, I'm going to really show up for the people that I care about. I like that. I like that. That's very That's sweet why I of drove you. to Timonium for that uh, comedy show that you did, AJ. And oh, then yeah, I had thanks. a migraine. I had to thanks. leave. You stayed for 20 minutes. minutes. She got, she got some chicken fries, fries but left. she was there. You're right. And then you complained about it on social media. <laughs> drove all the way to Timonium. Oh, I love chicken tender and dip. Yeah. Timonium is serious love. Have has anyone been to Timonium? You have to go on eight beltways to get there. You go on our beltway. Then you go up a little way to Baltimore. Then Baltimore has this other beltway. You go on that. Then you go out to a cornfield. You pass a fair. Then you pull into Magoobies, which is like an old abandoned warehouse. When you hear of Magoobies, you know it's like war, like renowned around the nation. Of like a big Tiffany Haddish. You know, the, you, you look oh, on the wall. Dave Chappelle. Huge people. Dave Everybody's Chappelle. been there. You're like, this place? <laughs> now, I'm not trash in Magoobies. I hope I'm there again. And I hope I make it on your wall. But it smells a little bit like old laundry. <laughs> and it's dark and shabby. That's my only complaint. It's, honestly, it does smell like feet. When you walk in, it's like everyone took their shoes off and then rubbed the carpet. Like one of those Asian restaurants that like they hope that you take the shoes off and sit on the floor while eating. But you're like, <laughs> where is that place? Yeah, what? I'll not name the names. Where are you, but you, know, you know the places they want you to take the your shoes off and sit and be part of the cultural experience? Is that like a Benihana? Smell, pretty much. But, oh. it, <laughs> but everything's on the floor. No, you know those restaurants where they take the, oh, the shoes off. Sweetie, I've Strangers never been to a Benihana. Like you sit on pillows on the floor and you eat from a, an elevated surface. Okay, that could be fun, but I don't want to smell everybody else's feet. Well, that's the issue. It smells. Hmm. I've never been there. All right, you got to take me to that restaurant. There's a couple of them. All right, yeah. I want to go to them. <laughs> I do. Uh, so, okay, look, let's thank a couple of our sponsors, and then I, I need your advice for the wedding. I'll, I'll tell you the latest update. Happened yesterday. Schman's upset. I'm upset. I don't know what to do. Still no ring. Hopefully, I'll have a ring resolution for you very soon. Mm. You know, you guys- the last ring that we had, um, you know, it was like this two-carat massive rock. I liked that ring. You did? I've said this once. I'll say it again. It's a gorgeous ring. I know, but then you told me that you liked the first one, only to find out once that they bring that, brought out this two-carat rock. You were like, you know, I hated the first one. <laughs> Get this new one, bitch. I'm like, why didn't you tell me that in the first one? Okay. Would, would you actually break someone's heart if they came to you super excited? I liked the first one. I wasn't in love with the first one. But you were excited, and I wanted to be happy for you as a friend. <laughs> but I'm trying to also get one, you know, that is realistic to wear every day. Yes, and you thought the second one was a little bit too much. It's massive. I can't even imagine walking around like this. Again, I'm trying to, like, I really don't have money. I'm building my business. And yet, I, you know, I go on social media with an, a $13 juice and then this two-carat rock. People are going to be like, bitch, we're, okay, uh, Paul will raise his rates and so will you. And I won't have a nickel to pay. Like, everything's in the red. Your priorities are clearly in order. Anyway. <laughs> also, by the way, isn't this shallow? Do you ever have really shallow thoughts? But when you were saying the Botox comment, I cannot get Botox because I'm trying to get pregnant in the next three months. And I'm really, and see, I shouldn't be upset about this because so many tragic things are happening, like Beth Chapman. So many, you know, there's like way bigger priorities. The so border. why am I, this is the effect of Instagram. 
Uh, it's, it truly is. But I'll tell you, your face looks phenomenal. Also, when the baby juices start flowing, you we're going to look the best you've ever looked. Like, don't they say that the, the, the hormones, baby glow. the baby glow. Maddie, our intern's like making this boob motion. She's like, big tits. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. I'll have big tits and apparently a glowing face. I know. It's, it's so true. shallow. I need to, I think it's a good it's a good reminder. But I will say my nails will be done. My hair will be blown out in the hospital when I give birth. Really? Is that too much? <sighs> okay, you know when they take the first pictures? Like, my mom looked stunning because she was, like, a child when she gave birth, so she looks beautiful anyways. But my ass is going to look distressed and disheveled. I'm gonna, You're going to take the epidural. I want to do a natural birth. I'm going to be sweating from all places, and I want my hair to be blown out when they take those first pics. Oh, I'm oh. going to try not to do the epidural. I'm really going to try to have it I'm going to hold that hand, Sarah. I want to do it standing up so I can that catch it. That might hurt it. you more. It's going to be like, age, age. And then Schman's going to be like, say my name. Oh, my God. <laughs> but you're you're going to say my name. Oh, you're going to be in the room. And I want to do it standing up so I can catch it as it comes out. Like Courtney Kardashian. Courtney yeah. Kardashian. <laughs> oh, look. Here's the baby. <laughs> Uh, if you are just tuning into the show for the very first time, thank you so much. We picked up a bunch of new subscribers on YouTube. Um, the voice you hear that's very sexy, my brother thinks it's sexy. Uh, Jackie is her name. She's 21 years old. Um, she's still in college, junior in college, heading into your senior year. Mm-hmm. Heading into your senior year. What's something we don't know about you? What's a little fun fact that we don't hmm. know about you? Like, I mean, you have massive tits as well. Can you open a beer bottle with those? Like, what do you do with them? <laughs> can you, you know, smash a watermelon? I can actually open a beer bottle with my teeth. <gasps> oh, God. My mom oh. doesn't like when Ooh. I do that. It, I know. Sorry, Mom. But I do that. It's a party trick. I, I think you it's really hot. do that? If that I was seems a guy, really awful, Jackie. Yeah. I, mean, I don't cr- I mean, unless you crack it, but like just. Yeah. You just got to bend it. People don't realize it's not really like hurting it that much. But my mom goes, I paid for those teeth. <laughs> That's right. That sounds awful. Yeah. Okay, well, that's the voice that's that you hear, 21 years old. Um, it is kind of an all-girl show. You know, we do like yeah. to have the all-women show. We do have Paul Wharton on, and he gets very upset when we call him a woman. He looks like a woman from behind, but he's all man. <laughs> he does. He's he does. All he does man. He does. He gets all it's upset. that voluptuous hair. We've said, hey, girl, in the past. He goes, don't call me a girl. Okay. He no has problem. better hair than me. He does. Touchy. better. He has everything better than us. Um, <laughs> yes, because he gets to go to the Hamptons for four days and gets cool sculpting. AJ on the mic <laughs> is a little bit older than 21, but not by much. Twenty five, Turning 25 this August. Turn, three days after your wedding. So I'm going to be getting lit. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm. About to be two weeks away from being on NBC's brand new show, Bring the Funny. Mm-hmm. Amanda Seals is the host. Keenan Thompson's one of the judges. Chrissy Teigen. And then randomly, like Jeff Foxworthy. Who knows where they dragged him in from? <laughs> Has anyone Your heard agents. Jeff Foxworthy's joke in the back? Like, he's got a hell of an he's agent. He's got a hell of an agent. We got to get Jeff Foxworthy's agents. Whatever they're doing. No, I got a good agents. You do have good agents. Um, but what's something we don't know about you? Have you revealed anything? Um, the most shocking thing was that uh, I had a twin and I ate it in the womb. But we've discussed that. Right. Yeah. That was really crazy. Mm-hmm. Tell people about that. You were a twin. How do you do this? Yeah. And you didn't physically eat it at nine months, you right? Like you absorb kind of, it, don't right? you? Mm-hmm. You absorb the nutrients. And so my mom just has an ultrasound of the sack. And my, it's just wasting away into mine. Like I was just sucking the nutrients out. And that's my fun fact. Whenever anybody asks, I'm like, I ate my twin amazing you know we were just sitting okay and, and i'm sarah frazier i'm a few years older than these two uh i'm an aspiring internet comedian which basically means i repost memes and i never tour and <laughs> no bitch you're so much more than that you are a seasoned radio TV personality yes yeah, season longtime radio personality work for fox 5 hbo's crashing um and i well, say hbo's crashing you know i was on for three minutes but i when you say it like that it's like recurring role you know <laughs> anyway, fun facts about me. Okay, did, I was telling you guys this when we had coffee this morning and we were show prepping. Does anyone, when you were in high school, was it cool to have like a subwoofer system in your car? This was in the 90s. Everybody was getting like brand new speakers. It was like $2,000. This was like the biggest thing to do. And you'd have a subwoofer and you would pull up like listening to Tupac. Now, I'm thinking because I grew up in Maine and I was like so white that maybe this was like the whitest thing that you could do. But I, my first car was like a used Saab. And it, then I tricked Hi. it out with like a massive <laughs> subwoofer. And what, what does a subwoofer go for? Do you spend like all your babysitting money on this? Like, <laughs> what what are we talking I here? Don't know, but when I said to you guys that, you looked at me like, "What in the actual fuck?" Because you wanted a better sound system in your car. So I mean, I totally get that. Uh, your CD changer. You'd have a CD changer in the trunk. Oh, the multiple mm-hmm. like six CDs six, rotating. Six to twelve CDs. Multiple changer in the back. Subs, and then you would just like be rolling down the streets of like Maine. Bam, bam, Boom. country road. Yeah, country road, Wiscasset, Booth Bay, Bath, back road, subwoofer, Tupac. 
Mm, no one right. else all I gotta say is we always just ask for the ox cord like yo where's the ox cord <laughs> yeah. like hand me the Especially ox cord in the Uber. you Nobody gotta be like, like right um do you have that ox cord thank you Lillian and Lillian's like, done out. she says yes you crank the bass up so you can have your whole body thumping to the beat thank god some other New Englander who knew I'm sorry I was like when I was I telling these guys they literally like why the fuck what's a subwoofer why would you put in speakers in your car you put a subwoofer into any car, or it's usually just an older version that any you need car. to upgrade. And it was like a box in the back that had to what? be attached to your trunk. I feel like I've just seen that in movies, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Fun fact about me. Now you can just, okay, all right. So um, Sarah had a subwoofer. It sounds intense. I was so, it was so dope, and, and like I would roll up. I was like the only woman that had it in the high school. That's all cool. Big had it. So yeah. you were... Then you I was like, like <laughs> okay, you guys think you're swinging dicks? Check out my cock. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled up. And, what did, and how younger, Seth is a couple years, you guys kind of went to high school together, though. Seth and I are like, my brother, Seth, we're Irish twins, so he's only 18 months younger. That's so crazy. we basically grew up as twins, which when I was younger, I hated because Seth always hung out with my girlfriends. He always hung out with my friends and they loved him. We always had the same friends. And I always was like, get out of here. I don't want to hang out with you. And but now, of course, I like adore. We're, we're like best friends. There's my bestie. Now, there is your bestie. Seth, without fail, calls every day. Every, every day. day. <laughs> every day. I mean, isn't he like a little sweetheart? No, he always says I hate on him. But no, I, I genuinely love your guys' relationship. I'm I'm really like we've always been super close. We've traveled together. He's been the the greatest brother. And of course, you know, now he has my niece. Um, you know, his daughter is Kimber is like I just adore her so much. So, and it's fun cuz she's like getting to the age where we're almost like like triplets, you know? Not quite. I mean, she is 13, but like when we're, when she's 18, like I just feel like we'll all be hanging out. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Take her out and then have one margarita and then have a hangover the next day. But yes, definitely. Story of my life. <laughs> I can't. I am sober. It's crazy. Um, all right. Let's thank some sponsors. And then we have so many stories to get to. We have to thank Advantage Financial. Personal loans can be used for much more than to pay for just credit cards. Borrow up to $30,000 with Advantage Financial to finance your dream vacation, wedding, or swimming pool. Swim into savings this summer with a new pool financed by Advantage Financial. If you're looking to enhance your summer vacay, this could be yours. Advantage Financial makes it easy and reasonable to finance your next pool vacation and more. I have done the application process and was approved for a small business loan and line of credit, which I use from Advantage Financial. The process could not have been easier. They could not have been more amazing. And, of course, their loan rates are super low because they're a credit union, which means they don't have a board and expensive CEOs that they pay. All that money goes back to you. Personal loans can be used for vacations, weddings, engagement rings, braces, and so much more. Borrow up to 30K. Easy auto pay is available as well. Go to advfcu.org to apply today. RV and boat loans are as low as 5.4%. AJ, you got to hit us with some cryotherapy advantage and Rothy's. Cryotherapy Advantage, our friends are over in Chantilly. The two amazing women came to our live show. They were so much fun. They were like the yes. first ones there buying drinks. I was like, hello. Uh, they have amazing staff there. You guys, great deals right now. It's 50% off all cryo skin facials, which because Sarah can't get Botox, she's going to be loving up on them cryo skin facials. Only 20 minutes. It's half the time of a regular facial. And then $25 sessions for cryotherapy. If you guys work out a lot, you're very active, you want to get those endorphins running around, those joints, this is very good for you. It just freezes all the pain away. It also boosts energy levels. You're going to feel amazing. I did it. I was scared of the cold, but it's like negative 200 degrees, but it doesn't feel like it. It's not that long. It's like, what, two-minute session in and there? Yeah, It's three minutes. It's awesome. You sleep the best you've ever slept. And they're, with the $25 cryo sessions, it's unreal with, their, with the code HeyFrage. And the facial really works. They do a before and after picture, so you see instant results, which I love. That was the craziest. You literally yeah. see the wrinkles going away. Yeah, and I'm going all the time because that's I can safely do that. So tell us, tell them, hey, Farish sent you, you get all those deals and more. Uh, and I'm a big advocate for cryotherapy now, which I wasn't, I was scared before. Joe Rogan does cryotherapy. So, you know, it's got to be good. We love, we love Joe. And Norma Tech, they do that too, which is they, you, they put you in this like bubble blow suit. It's so awesome. And that gets all of your um, circulation going, your lymphatic system. It's, it's total whole body healing there. While we were there, an actual, them. like, uh, super mom, she came in. She's like, yeah. oh, you should just drop your kids off uh, from, like, carpool. And she just comes in for her sessions. So it's super easy. If you're a busy mom, a busy person, on the go, you can go in. They set you up. You just, like, lay there for, like. Oh, my God, yeah. And at $25 a pop for cryo, go for, like, buy, like, a package of 8 or 10. And then go. Because the best result is if you can go once or twice a week continually, that's when you see, like, even longer-term effects. 
If you guys want to go with us, DM us. I'll go with you. Yeah, me too. Uh, also, our friends at Ra- our Rothy's, you guys have heard of us talk about them before. They're an awesome shoe company. Uh, they are made from recycled plastic bottles. So they're insanely comfortable and machine washable. I got the pink fuchsia. They have a lot of different um, like patterns and colors. They have just regular colors and they also have like tons of patterns they're stylish sustainable comfortable washable and really all you need is one pair of these shoes they're super comfortable you can go to work in them and they just conform to your feet so the la- the bottom layer is super just literally it matches right into your foot super comfy they're everyday flats for life on the go versatile and they go with everything from yoga pants to dresses and skirts they come in a wide range of colors and patterns as i said i got the fuchsia fuchsia snake skin yeah they're gorgeous they have like tons of different fla- you guys can go to my um social aj on the mic i've posted them before seamlessly crafted from recycled water bottles they're ultra comfortable as soon as you slip them on there's zero break-in period in these shoes and they're machine washable hey <laughs> hey so even yes, if you're like super I love doing sweaty laundry. yes <laughs> Just throw them in the wash real quick. They'll be good to Absolutely. go. Absolutely. If my feet smell anything like my armpits, they're getting the wash twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Straight onions, yo. Uh, they're manufactured in mm. zero waste factory. They ship directly in a shoebox. No unnecessary packaging. They're always thinking about the environment. These Ooh, guys. You'll quickly discover. These. Are you? Sm- oh, I thought she was smelling her pits. <laughs> you missed that. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Gave it a good whiff. There we go. Musty rose. Musty rose. Musty, Musty rose. attic musty attic oh my god buzzfeed has actually called rothy's the forever shoes so if you guys go to rothy's.com slash frage get your new favorite flats r-o-t-h-y-s dot com slash frage comfort style and sustainability these are the shoes you've been waiting for head to rothy's.com slash frage today it's the best way to support the hey frage podcast you guys are awesome supporters so help us out so perfect. Jackie, will you go get Travis Thomas yes, from the uh, Santana Moss show? And I'm going to just tell quickly. So I would love your suggestions. Long story short, yesterday we got news. You know, Dan has five groomsmen. My brother, my Uncle George. So my, my brother and my Uncle George are going to walk me down the aisle for the wedding I August 10th. I love that. Okay, yes, you I'm know, already going to cry. Georgie has been like another parent to me. Uh, my Uncle Tony and George, my Uncle Tony passed away in February, but they were the really w- the ones that kind of exposed us to a different life outside of Maine. They traveled. You know, it was awesome to have gunkles who didn't have kids because they had, like, disposable income and bought us things and were just such wonderful influences in our lives. So Seth and my Uncle George are going to walk me down the aisle. Kimber, is, my niece, is the only bridesmaid in the party. And then Dan has two brothers, Mike and Jay. So they're going to stand up with him. So we wanted all the men, all five of them, to wear the same suits. I'm not going to name names because, you know, it's so frustrating. Anyway, we went to this new supposedly cutting-edge suit company that makes custom-makes suits for men very affordably. And it has just been one nightmare after another trying to get these suits. So all the guys received the suits. Uh, It's supposed to be this really cool, like, blue. I wanted the men, like... um, Really fitted pants, no socks, brown shoes, uh, very crisp white shirt, gold pocket square, blue jacket, no tie, open, Ooh. like sexy. You know, Schman is like totally gotten hotter. So he has a great style, I will but, say. I know he's looking so fucking hot these days, right? Like I'm so attracted to him. So I want him like tight, sexy, owning it, sleek right? style, sleek, yeah, sleek brown belt. I love it, love it. Okay, they all get the suits. And it's a clusterfuck. None of them fit. Dan's is too big in the pants, too big in the legs. The legs are, like, not fitted. It's almost as though they sent the guys all the wrong suits, suits. that don't even, uh, well, weren't even for maybe, them. Maybe they're wrong sizes. Like, we can just figure out what each person sent in and see what the sizes are. Maybe maybe we should try to do that. Seth's is so tight, he can't get it on. The jacket, he said it's like fat man little coat. He what? said it's, like, such a nightmare. Yeah. So, Schman, you know, calls the company yesterday. They go, okay, um, yeah, hold on. Oh, yeah, by the way, we're completely out of the fabric that you ordered these five suits in. So, yeah, there's nothing we could do. What do you mean so, out of fabric? Thank you. You already paid for the suits, right? Everything is paid for. Bought the guy's suits, all this stuff. What do they suggest you do? So they go, give us a couple more days. We're going to see if we can ne- get another bolt of that fabric. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Who runs out? If this is an actual, have you heard good reviews about them? Because <laughs> this is a good a company. Yeah, let me, get, let, me just, let me just run over to the fabric store, get a bolt of it. I mean, where do you even? I honestly, I, I did not read the reviews because I've kind of left this. I've told Schman my vision. Yes. And then I've left it up to him. And so he found this company that he, I, I you know, Dan usually does his research. So I'm assuming I, it was I believe that. fairly well rated. And it has just been one nightmare after another. So they're apparently, I said, you can give them till the end of the week. But the reality is, if they can't get this together, 
what are we going to do? Where are we going to get their suits? I want them all to match. And and I don't know. Maybe I should be more open to rentals. He's like, let's rent. But I'm like, I don't. Is rental, they kind of match you as best they can, right? But they don't. It's not going to look great, right? Rentals. Apparently Nordstrom's has a rental company. My Tux or something. And you know what? Rentals technically are cheaper. So you'll probably get a full refund of that. And then you just have to tell, you know, worst case scenario, you tell them to go to their Nordstrom uh, locator retailer and then kind of rent the suit. I think they have tons of sizes at rental companies. Well, the problem, too, is, you know, we have a groomsman in L.A. We have one in Detroit. Uh, oh. Gunkle George is in Connecticut, is in Stamford, Connecticut. Sethi is in Maine. So how do you get these guys rental suits? Well, they would have to go, like, say you find a suit that you like on Nordstrom, you know, call up there, uh, make an appointment with them, have the guy go into that lo- local retailer of Nordstrom's and make sure they have the suit. But that's what I would think. <sighs> so I-, I would love your suggestions. A lot of people are saying go to Zara. Do you think they have a rental? Well, no, I mean, you yeah. buy it, Zara. But a lot of people are saying that Zara suits um, are really nice. So... I mean, I've, uh, I've, lo- you know who shops at Zara a lot? Paul Warden. He would, he would love that. Maybe I should have Paul pull it off. He's a huge advocate I of Zara suits. I would love your thoughts. Uh, Amy is saying, best decision I ever made was to rent suits for all the groomsmen. Um, Gotta be cheaper. And then they can just return it after. You know what I mean? They don't have to own that suit forever. I know. <gasps> Travis, come on in. Travis, come on in. We're live. Put your headphones on. Travis, we're having all kinds of wedding drama. You've been, you're, you're married. You've been there. You're a married oh. man. Oh my God. I feel so bad having you on this show. We're going to fucking grill you. Uh, like, I mean, I feel like this is going to be it. How you doing? Travis Thomas is amazing. Sub age. Co host hey, of the Santana Moss Show. Also on NBC, yeah. you have your own show there. Yeah. You like kill it in this market. I love it. Sports guy. By the way, okay, this is totally inside <laughs> baseball. Did you watch HBO's um, The Brian Gumble special on Barstool Sports? No, I didn't. It's so good. Are you a fan of Barstool and Dave Portnoy? Uh, I, I don't like that. Thank you very much. Wait, is this non alcohol? <laughs> no, this isn't going to work for me. Oh, yeah, we get all those, want beers. Fact, get those cans. Find the strongest one. We in all there. want beers. We all find want beers. Find the IPA. Just I want the opposite IP- of yeah. that shit. Did you see that? <laughs> did she bring you an Odul? Yeah, like. Oh, why did they even oh, have Odul? I actually yeah. want the opposite of what just happened. Oh, you um, need it. <laughs> as I am about to say, I'm not a big fan of like frat boy sports things. That's how Barstool feels to me. Okay, but yeah. of course, I say that in the same breath where I'm like, I need a stronger beer than that shit. Bring out the strongest you have. <laughs> I'm gonna shotgun a beer. <laughs> on your show right now well you know what i liked about it is <laughs> obviously dave portnoy is certainly who he is you yes. know he sticks with who he is whether you like him or not right total misogynist or not. yeah i just don't like <laughs> it's like completely it's kind of what we were talking about off air earlier <laughs> yes in our business yeah just be careful that's all yeah so i don't like anyone that offends anyone whether it's gender or sexuality or whatever well i'm just not into that and it's sports so can we just relax? Like, just talk sports. You don't have to be offensive to anyone. That's my thing. Look that's just you. me. Maybe that's old school. I love it. Yeah. All right. We're all Let's getting go. beers. Yes. Let's go. Um, Travis, before we get Woo. into it, because we have so many things to ask you. No, wait, Jackie, how do we open this? Is this Use like- your teeth. Here. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Wait a minute Probably now. twist off. Are these twist offs? Oh, I don't think Look at you, you have what? I'm an alcoholic. Well, okay, what? <laughs> you Let have everyone. like a bar. You've got he's this welcoming. man's got a he, bottle. He has a new yeah. baby at home. His wife just oh. had their second <laughs> beautiful child. Yes. Oh my god, two babies. Now I'm trying yeah. to get pregnant. What do you think? Good idea or not? Oh yeah, you should definitely do it. <laughs> I would tell you something different about marriage, but the baby thing definitely. <laughs> Cheers. Was, we love you. Before we <laughs> get into you, all the questions, yeah. we want to ask you, what is your Ew. social media? Because we want everyone to follow uh, you. Travis Thomas Experience on all social medias. Easy. Okay, I hate people that are like, well, first it's Travis <laughs> underscore backslash. Like, no, Travis Thomas ex- experience. Simple. It's when long, you, but. And you and simple. Santana put out the show on Thursdays? I don't, you know, I don't know. <laughs> that shit changes. <laughs> you know, I used to edit for your show, and yeah. then I was like, now what? I don't know. <laughs> it's weekly. It's when, it is weekly, though. It is weekly. When you're Santana Moss, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Well, here's I mean, the that thing. that dude lives a life. Just subscribe. Right? And then you get them when you get them. They are weekly. I just don't know. Who knows at this point what day. What's your show on NBC, though? When can people tune into that? Oh, uh, well, now I'm on every show on what? NBC Sports Watch. Yeah. So I was on DC Sports Live constantly, Monday through Friday, every night at 10. But lately, uh, they've taken me off of that every night. So I do it sometimes. 
But I'm hosting a Nationals podcast show oh. uh, called The Racing Presidents. I'm hosting, yeah, I'm hosting some Redskins programming. I'm all over Wizards content, so I'm doing everything. Now, who's on the Nationals uh, Racing President show? Do they uh, have the actual presidents? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did wear one of those once <gasps> in oh, the is race. It hot? Oh, it's a nightmare. Is it hard to run with the big heads? Yeah, I, I raced <laughs> Brian Mitchell, who is an all-time athlete, uh, Redskins okay. Super Bowl champ. Has he still got it? I mean, he's he's a little oh, older yeah. now. Has yes. he still got it? He yes. still got it. Once an athlete, always an athlete, <laughs> really? and I've never been an athlete. Oh, I hear so ya. there's that. Uh, yeah, it was hot. It was like the, it was too. Oh, the much. whole head. You, you actually, know, I was the in stadium co-host, right, in 2011, yes, and they I did fired know that. me. But you yeah. didn't wear one of those, did you? <laughs> fired no, me. no. Okay. I was out there with the gun, you know, shooting people oh, with the t-shirts. God. And then, uh, you know, they I, they suspended me after they had a player. I think his last <laughs> name was was it Wong? Wong, right? Wong. But I went out and said Wang, and they thought that I was trying oh, to make okay. a dick joke. Yeah. yeah, you can't. Do, you can't go the Wang jokes. Sarah, you just oh. can't. <laughs> you can't do it. I, but this is the thing. This is like how I empathize with Dave Portnoy from Barstool Sports. It's like you tuned into the Kane show. You knew what you were getting. I mean, we bust people with roses and fake herpes. Like, and then you want me to come <laughs> and pronounce people's names correctly? I'm no sports wizard. Anyway, it was they canned me short after. You know more sports than you give yourself credit for, though. I love you sports. often have conversations with me about sports. I don't want to get too like no one. I don't know how much our listeners care about sports, but I also <laughs> would love your opinion on like women's soccer. If you think they should get equal pay or not? Of course. I know. Of course. Why is that such it's, a battle? It's just a no-brainer. Women's sports in general. Yeah, why? Women I can't even general. believe that, that they don't want to pay them. Thank you. Right? It's it's just a no-brainer. Okay, we're auditioning you for this show. Let's go. You might replace Paul Wharton. No, Paul's, <laughs> Paul's the goat. I can't do it. All right, Cosmo, we really wanted to have you up because Cosmo wanted to know what men wish women would do more of in relationships. And how many years have you been married? Oh, uh, five, four, oh, You guys are young. Three, oh, <laughs> Wait, wait, Somewhere what? <laughs> wow. We've been together, I don't know, I'm bad with dates. 2012, we were together, we got married. So, four years. This 2019 will be four now. Years. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Lord. Okay, yeah. All right, sounds and good. two kids. Yeah. And two babies. Once you start having kids, all the dates kind of blend together. I remember oh, I their bet. birthdays, her birthday, anniversary, other than that. I you don't need nothing. any more than that. Yeah. True, truly. All right, so a bunch of men get on Reddit, and apparently they claim this is what men, so hundreds of men chimed in for this conversation. They say this is they wish women would do more of. Number one, making decisions. Uh, men on the Reddit feed said lots of my exes would refuse to make any decisions about what we were going to do. If I was visiting her, she wouldn't buy food until I arrived and decided what we were going to eat. So would you, do you feel like that's true? Do you think men in general, you work with all kinds of guys, do you right. think they wish that women made more decisions? I don't think it's the actual decision making that's the issue. Okay. It's the mixed signals we receive about said decision making. Here's what, what I mean. mean? Yeah. Here's what I mean. This is actually very um, relevant in my home right now. Okay. Uh, okay, don't worry. Yeah. Um, how do I word this? So there are times when... I am told that I need to make decisions. Okay, yeah. Then there are times when I'm told I need to fall back and let a decision be made. The confusion comes with the messaging when it's time to do either. Does that make sense? So in other words, oh, sure. I'm supposed to uh, just know. Just know when to step up and make yes. decisions. Okay, you and also you know when to fall back. It is not verbalized to me. Hey, right now would be a good time for you to make a decision. That's all men need. We just yeah. need direction. We don't mind either or. The mixed signals is where we get. I have got an up. awesome couples therapist for you. Yeah, I may need that, especially <laughs> after this airs. Oh, we go all the time. It's amazing. I could not, it, men and women, it's so hard to communicate. It truly is. We're from different planets. Yeah. Like, honestly, it's so hard, you know, because men don't know what you want. We just women need don't direction. Know. I yeah. think, I think a, I think a good man will listen to you, but you got to tell him what you need. We have trouble reading your minds, and so I think that's the expectation. Like drill sergeants, almost. We're like, if we want to go out to dinner, we need to be like, hey, can can you take me out to dinner tonight? And that'll be fine. Yes. Okay, but see, and I take it as 
he doesn't care about me, so that's why he's not asking to take me out to dinner. I know, and I take it as, you know, why doesn't Dan know? Like, I gotta spell everything out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know? Like, I've gotta tell, it's like, hey, <laughs> that's okay, what on I'm saying. Valentine's Day, I want this Rose's company, I want the, I'm like, really, you can't, you don't think of anything on your own, well, and then I go, I, when the fuck are you gonna plan some <laughs> surprise Can I ask, you, for can I ask me? you this? If you were to tell him, like, like you just said, take me out to dinner, we haven't been out in a while. Right. You don't want to have to say that. But if you were to say that and then left the creativity to him, would that be okay? Yes, definitely. Okay, then. There's just let's never do any that. creativity after that. Well, then that's a problem. Right. It's like, but, uh, where do you want to go? Yeah, it's like, that's, I don't know. Where see, do you that's an go? issue. See, when I did that, I got engaged at the Iwo Jima War Memorial. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's really rough. It's really hard. And I try to be supportive and loving. And I'm like, you know what? It doesn't really matter where we got engaged, it's right. the words that were said. Sure. Uh, and the, you know, emotion in his eye. I'm, I'm, but I'm just, I'm looking at the guys hoisting up the flag. I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> I didn't really think it was going to be But that's here. a compromise is, is, you know, you wanted to get engaged. It happened, but you left the creative part to him. So you get what you get. It's just. It's actually perfect, though. I think it's a compromise. Love is a fucking battlefield. That you know, it is. Every day you are in the, it is one the battle trenches. after another. Yeah. And you pray at the end, you're winning the war together. Well, that's the key word is the teamwork aspect, right? I mean, we're all in this together. So all if you work together. together, you can make it happen. Okay, here's number two. This is what men wish women would do more often in relationships. They mm. say compliments. As a guy, we're constantly expected to shower our women with praise, prop up their confidence, make them feel pretty smart and overall awesome. On the other hand, the vast majority of women, the men said on Reddit, that they have dated hardly ever complimented them. You think that's true? Travis. Yeah, I never. Yes. Really? Yeah, I never get complimented. Every day I say to Dan, You're so amazing. I'm so lucky to Thank have you. you. I'm so grateful to have you. And what does he do? What does he do? In return? He hits the smoothie yeah. button. Nothing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm, like, yeah. I'm out here. And that shit is true because I'm at their house most of the time <laughs> in the morning. He does. I'm sitting there going, babe, I'm so grateful to have you. How lucky I am that God gave me you. And then oh, he's that's like, great. All right, close your ears, babe. I got a pulse. <laughs> Well, you guys are, to be fair. Yeah, we're um, in the early ladies, throws. Well, ladies are the same way in the sense that if you do shower her with compliments, which every man should, uh, I, I think sometimes you can take us for granted. Like for me, when I compliment my wife, it's usually, her response is usually, oh, you're just saying that. Or, Damn, I do say that. You don't really, that. you know, like. Yeah, it, it, you it have doesn't, to accept it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, I, I kind of feel like maybe he's just like, because you do it all the time, he's just taking, kind of tired of it. It's taken not for ta granted. Not tired of it, but it's expected now. So it kind of rolls off of him. All right. So tell all the women listening, as a guy, what do you want to hear as a compliment? Oh, well, definitely <laughs> um, like flyness. So if you like my outfit, tell me. Because we do that. Ah, like, that's you know, really good. Yeah. If you have a nice dress, I'm like, damn, your ass looks good in that dress. We want to hear the baby. same shit. So, like, yeah. if you got a nice shirt, you know, and maybe the pecs are hitting right. If if you hear that from your lady, that's a beautiful thing. All right, right? I like that. Yes. So I would say outfits for sure, because um, she picks out like my on air outfits. Because I she am a shit so show. Cute. I'm terrible with fashion, right? <laughs> so she'll so pick cute. out my um my on air stuff. So in its own way, that is complimentary, because she she's like, you look good in this. All right, that's you know? a great comp. Yes. Now we know. So I would say clothes. Uh, for dudes, or you wouldn't think that, but that's a big deal. If he's working out or he's taking care of himself, stay on that. Guys Absolutely. always want to hear that them, shit. Yes. Pecs. I've always. been with a lot of fat guys. <laughs> your pecs. Them pecs. Babe, your pecs look amazing in that shirt. <laughs> Thanks, babe. I've been benching. So, Travis is hilarious. <laughs> that is, like, literally, when I'm editing their stuff, it's hilarious. Now, my favorite set, I know we have like 12 more <laughs> needs to go. Oh, accent. let's let's get it going. <laughs> Whatever. No, okay, wait, no, say it, say it. There was one funny thing you said that I was going to put on a t-shirt. I don't know. Oh, he a says so track. many funny. <laughs> oh, you liked, um, Tana was talking about how he was drunk. And I said, Tana was faded and feeling X-rated. And she <laughs> thought it was the funniest <laughs> shit. Ever. That needs to be on a shirt and a bumper sticker. Faded and feeling X rating. You like that oh one. Oh my God, we got to do a drinking game with you two. Oh, I We've got to do Rose Pong. It. Rose Pong against the Santana Moss show. Oh, yeah. so probably a little bit. Uh, we need something else in there, like uh, Heineken. We're just no, going to expect them to just like, sip Rose. I, I drink it. I, I drink. 
All of it. <laughs> All right, look, number three on the list. This is this is apparently a list from Cosmo Magazine and Reddit. This is what men wish women would do more often in a relationship. Number three. Now, I have to admit, I never do this. Take me out to dinner once in a while. Men say that in even though it's 2019, they're expected to treat their wives, treat their girlfriends, and the pressure is on to take you out. But it never is reversed. Do you think that's true? Does your wife ever take you to dinner, Travis? Uh, No, but I'm also old school. So, you know, unlike my birthday or something like that, for example, right, uh, I always ask for her to make my favorite meal. Okay. So if she said, hey, for your birthday, I want to take you out, I would decline that. And I would say, no, I, I like home cooking. I'm old school. And then when we go out, she has offered to pick up the check, which is enough for me. She doesn't have to, like, broadcast to me. I, I'd like to take you out. Just offering is enough, and then I take care of it because I'm I'm a throwback. Okay, but like wait, that. this is where I get mixed signals from men. Okay, a couple minutes ago you were just saying when you give your <laughs> wife compliments, she yeah. doesn't really receive them. Right here she is trying to take you out to dinner to celebrate you, and you yeah. won't let her. Yeah, well, I just <laughs> say it's my birthday, so I'm like I would prefer you cook for me and instead she of she likes her cooking yeah That's i hot. like her cooking she's, if she couldn't she's cook saying, i'd go out i'd be you like bitch, I mean? don't, don't be I in that kitchen yeah, <laughs> exactly I'd, I'd go out and i'd let her pay i'd be cool with it so it's not really mixed signals it's just i'm like kind of remixing what she's trying to give me as a present number four holding the door for you men still do this they claim and they say it would be nice if women did the reverse you want nah, the door held for you absolutely not in fact i'd probably get offended I'd be like, no. Okay, well, I am a gentleman. Okay. Let that gore, let that door go right now. Let it go. I'm serious. Like I'd argue with her. But it's 2019. I don't care. You're if a you're young raised guy. right, if you're raised right as a dude, you hold the door. That's all there is to it. If you don't like number four, you're gonna hate number five. Oh boy. Two words, big spoon. Do you want your wife to be big spoon <laughs> and, and hold you? Okay. <laughs> We're going to get deep ah! here. All right. Oh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to be have honest. Have you heard our show, please? Ooh. We are inside Travis yeah. Thomas. There's no crevice we haven't explored. I'm going to be honest. Yeah. If we're watching a movie or something, I'm all for spooning. Yes. If we are sleeping, do not fucking come near me <laughs> with any spoons or knives or forks. I don't give a fuck. Don't cuddle with me. I'm asleep. More than likely, we just got it in. I need... I need space. It's hot. I'm sweaty. <laughs> Don't cuddle. I'm not a cuddle. Now, I am. I'm very affectionate. I enjoy cuddling, but just not in a <laughs> not in a bed setting. Does that make sense? Like in a sleep setting, I need my space. I am more confused than ever. Is this not showing you how men and women are from different planets? I mean, I can't even read you. We're all over the place. I'll little Don't spoon hold the door, if you... we're chilling. I will not any spoon if it's like bedtime. This feels like a bedtime question. Yeah. Well, I hear I'm it. always Big Spoon with my man. My man does the opposite of all these things. <laughs> like, babe, you want to be Big Spoon? I'm always like, Big Spoon, I got to scratch his head, scratch his back. I'm like. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Just not, <laughs> not like prime time, spoon time. I'm not into it. When we're deep in bed and I just have like a shirt on and underwear, I don't like to be Little Spoon because then I got to like suck everything in and keep it tight. So he's like feeling me and he's like. Damn, her stomach is tight, even though it's not. Like, I, if I let it all go out, it's like, it's like a fluffy pillow. And then he's going to be feeling me being the big spoon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and Dan is with Travis. Like, when we get in bed, he doesn't really want to be yeah, touched. I'm not, yeah, I'm and not And sometimes, like, I try to, like, get kinky, and, like, I'll try to choke him out when he's, like, almost asleep, and he'll get so pissed. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, yeah. Like, That's I don't know. Sorry, I'm just Do that like, when he's awake. He's like, why no, can't you do so that? He's like, ah. Just do it when, why, why are you waiting until he goes like to sleep? He's, like, in REM sleep, and she's <laughs> choking. <laughs> what it's kind of sociopath shit is that? It's auto-erotic asphyxiation. It's auto-erotic. I was like, just oh, when no. you what think the you're going to... Sarah's going to end up so on mad. a Lifetime movie. <laughs> sure as shit. You watch. When she cracks. Right. Oh, well, <laughs> she started strangling me. He just me. looked so peaceful sleeping, so I decided to choke him out. <laughs> what about initiating sex? Who initiates sex in your house? Men want a lot more initiating of sex. God, I do this all the time for Schman. Now, once I would like him to just, like, <laughs> sex to me... You know, show me a ball or something. Wait, you initiate? Always. All the time. You? All, that's all I, I'm always Come like, on. do you find me a, like, I'll, I'll even ask for like a sex during the day. Like, what, like, something. You know what I'm saying? Jesus. <laughs> what, uh, we're dating the wrong people. <laughs> no, no comment on y'all situation. No, you can. We don't mind. Uh, yeah, we guys, know. we feel like we initiate a lot. Really? 
Yeah. Okay, so women need to init- initiate more. That would be initiate. a dream come true. All right. For me personally. Uh, how do you feel about this one? Uh, men say, I want fucking flowers once in my life. I'm a huge fan of giving flowers, and I love plants a lot more. This is like a survey of hundreds of men on Reddit. <laughs> but I never get them in my life. It'd be nice one day to just open the door and have flowers. Wow. Or a plant. Travis, is that what's plant. missing for you? You want I'd a plant. I'd be weirded out by that. <laughs> like, I'll why are you honest. giving me peonies? Yeah, this be, is weird. I'd be weirded out by that. <laughs> in fact, I think I could do a better job of sending more flowers to her. Because uh, when I do it, Yes, goes it's a long like, way. Yeah, it's like a big deal. I think deal. you should send one today and then give us a response. Today's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. <laughs> this cool, week, cool, cool. this week. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, yeah, I need to be in the mood to, like, mm-hmm. you know, that mm-hmm. I don't do it, like, on a Valentine's or birthday or, or whatever. Like, I'll do it random times, but things have to be really good. And we're in a good groove, and I'm just like, you know what? I appreciate her. I'm a sender. Boom. And that's, like, a big deal. What about this one? Men want a grumpy day. This is the last one. Men want a grumpy day. Or at least, like, a few days. Uh, Sometimes they say, the guy said on Reddit, we just have had enough. Uh, Shit's built up over time. I need to be quiet, moody, and generally have an air of fuck off about me. Not openly hostile, but I just need to stew. And (laughs) they say that women really aren't good at letting men sort of have that day. Which I'm not at all. I'm like, why are you in a bad mood? Yeah. (laughs) I yeah, don't know I if it's like a day. I, I think that's a dude to dude. Uh, like for me, I'm an emotional guy, so I, I'm pissy right in front of her. I don't give. I don't care. Like you can curse I, on here. I'll tell. I'll just tell her. Like you know, I'm pissed off. Get away from me. That's it. I don't need you, like a day to go away. I'm like, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> okay, the end. The end. And that's it, right? And then I'll go do whatever. <laughs> I'll go to the man cave or whatever it is, but. All right, now what I do don't you think, need like a day to unleash all my emotions. What Fuck do you that. think is missing from this list? Okay, so this was this was hundreds of guys that hopped on Reddit. They say that this is what they wish women knew and would yeah. do more for them in a relationship. What do you think? You're around all these guys, you know, <laughs> NFL players. Like, yeah. what do they want their wives to do more of or girlfriends? Uh, I just think, even though I feel like all women know men are horny, I don't know if you guys really know how fucking intense <laughs> horny guys are really so okay. like for the boo in your life no we have no idea you just have to just think as filthy as possible really like, yeah trust me honestly it's like we're dating no the, <laughs> we are dating we're yeah, dating you, the men you two are outliers no <laughs> sex drive no. No. seriously dudes yeah. are just yeah. horny really are not ours and we constantly think about sex Wow. And it doesn't I don't mean it in like a <laughs> I don't mean like, it what's that like? yeah. I don't mean it in like a cheating way I just mean it like for your partner like just just think of like raunchy things and do it. So even when you think they're not into it they probably they are. They are. They definitely are. <laughs> now you two I, again Oh man, I don't, I don't know, know what's going on with I gotta you two. really, you know what? What's a move? I gotta really try something on him. I think he'll freak out. I mean, honest to God. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. Because the little background I'm getting here, you you two have a different, unique situation. Oh, our guys are completely the opposite. We're the men in the relationship. Right. You yeah. Like kind of sounds all like the it. Time. Do you go kinda down on him like a lot? It. Yes, all the time. Do you use extra stuff like no. like whipped cream and like? Because when I try to do all that, they're like. It gets sticky, and I don't like it. What? Why are we thinking about the cleanup? That's a great point. Yeah, why are we thinking Honestly, about the cleanup? Honestly, though, yeah. mm-hmm. I did it once. It was really exciting, and then it was like we were done. I'll say this in your case. Okay, what? I, I actually think you're spoiling him. He just sounds like you have He's pampered. He's pampered. You've set yep. the bar. Yep. So, now, I, I just want to give you this marriage advice. This was given to me, and it was great. And okay, it was so okay, true. yeah, tell me. My grandfather, who's no longer with us, God rest his soul, told me when I was dating my current wife, because I've had a lot of relationship issues over the years, baggage, breakups, the whole deal, right? Okay, with women prior. With yes, women, okay, yes. Okay, sure. So with her, uh, he told me, he said, listen, I've watched you make this mistake in the past. He was like, don't set any precedents now at this point in your relationship that you can't continue when you get married and, and beyond. So I think what I was doing that he observed was like this pedestal and this amazing, I was like a different person than 
when I got in a relationship with someone. Does that make sense? Like yes. to court her, I did X, Y, Z. Then I got her and I was like, all right, whatever. And she was like, wait a minute, motherfucker. This <laughs> right. ain't what I you signed did all this. <laughs> yes. So I would say if you're setting all these bars as high as you are, which it sounds like it, and he's already used to that, which mm-hmm. it sounds like it. Oh, he just is. Just make sure you can continue this I can't. over the. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you. Now, now may be the time to start gearing down a bit, just so it's not such a shock when you say it. All right, I fine. Fewer blowjobs and fewer back scratches. No problem with me. Welcome to marriage. <laughs> Cheers to that. Yes. Cheers to marriage. Sarah's yes. walking down the aisle. Oh, my God. Travis, is. you are so awesome. Thank you for being on this show. Travis Thomas Experience on all social media. Yeah. We definitely need to challenge you and Tana to a... No, no. Tana drinks straight vodka Tito. on the yeah. show. Tito, straight up. He's been on. He's so good. He was great on this podcast. He has such an inspiring story. Like, how that guy overcame everything he did. He does so yeah, much he's great. good work. He's amazing. What I like about him is, because I meet a lot of athletes and coaches, is in this business that I'm in and they are so f- some of them are really fake oh like, yeah I bet. really f- like they push this brand of a clean guy or of a wholesome dude or whatever and then behind closed doors y- you know they're on coke and it's a strip club right yeah Tana is so genuine and he always has been his, his entire career he's like a grinder work hard dude humble guy uh, he he is as advertised, and that's what that's I really rare, like about probably. him the most. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, are you following OJ Simpson on Twitter? I'm not following him, really? but I have seen what's going on. Oh, I'm yeah. aware of what's happening with that guy. Uh, yes. Okay. Wait. Well, you might as well stay here because we end the show doing pop in, which Let's is everything in, in pop culture and celebrity news. So you know, yesterday, uh, well, this week was the 10th anniversary of Michael Jackson's passing. Yeah. They're doing a new Michael Jackson documentary with all the police and first responders that mm-hmm. showed up, which is like terrible. I would think this is some sort of HIPAA violation. Right. Um, but they're essentially saying that his bo- he was completely bald when he died. He died at 50 years old of a propofol overdose that was administered to him. So he dies of an overdose right right they're saying his body was riddled with scars because he had all kinds of plastic surgery and he was completely bald did anyone know that oh. it was all wigs yes it was That's all crazy. wigs and hair pieces what it looked so natural to me i mean i thought it looked, well, i don't so know that natural. it looked natural but it looked like but it, real but That's remember crazy. the pepsi incident that he had when he was yeah. like burned on stage with a pepsi commercial actually i don't think it was a commercial i think it was a live show and it was like oh some sort God. of like um, hair caught on fire right hair caught on fire so that hair never grew back then he was going bald anyway what? Yeah. So it's crazy. Uh, they they're talking about all the plastic surgery scars that he had. Of course, his like arms were like little, littered with puncture holes because he was, no. you know, I mean, sadly he was an addict at the time yeah. of his death. You know, he was getting drugs Pain to sleep, all, all that, that stuff. Yeah. But anyway, oh. then uh, O.J. Simpson put out basically talking about how when Nicole Brown Simpson, after she was uh. murdered that Michael hooked him up with the Neverland Ranch, said, you know, take your kids there, would give the kids. O.J. never met him in person, but basically went on Twitter to talk about OJ, it. O.J., just, just go away forever. Like, you should have been put away forever. But since that didn't happen, just go away. Like, go. He's like, go to an island and never be seen or heard from again. And how, when do you, how long do you think Twitter gets him in trouble? I mean... In trouble? Yeah, like he has never gotten in trouble. <laughs> apparently, if, well, I mean, he was in jail for yeah, that. Yeah, uh, but he's out, isn't he? He's out. Well, yeah, there you go. He's out. Um, Rihanna's being praised for using curvy mannequins with love handles at her Fenty clothing pop-up store in New York City. Love this. The uh, mannequins have like they have like love handles. Here they are. What do you think, Travis? Do you think this is more realistic for uh, beauty companies now to have? Because Nike is doing this too. They're having real women mannequins. You have a straight brother on this show, and you're going to ask me about <laughs> curves. You know goddamn well I love curves. Come okay. on. Yeah, that's right. It's about time we celebrated women with all body types. Who wants to go into these stores and, like, the mannequins don't look like real life? Well, those, they need to have bigger butts, though. I, these, I was going to say, they're, yeah. not a, they're not curvy enough for me, personally, but Well, we can't I'll see the it. back of them, but <laughs> I'm going to go with the booty isn't that big because they would have taken a picture of it. I like it. this one closest to us more than that. All right, that look one. at you. Yes, yes. I'm a curvy guy. We're out here trying. I like Rihanna because she's she's thick. Remember when she was like Ponda mm. Replay and she yeah. was like, you know, they had to get her in shape to like open up. Her forehead was bigger than her body, but now everything <laughs> is proportionate. It's proportionate. Yeah. Yeah. She's amazing. She looks good. She's the inspiration for this show. Yeah, we love her. yeah, absolutely. It's a good inspiration. She's like, I love her because to me, I'm not a big Beyonce fan because I don't think I think Beyonce <sighs> and Jay Z are very 
they've created this image, which is awesome. Obviously, yeah. it works for them. But Rihanna will tell you to fuck yourself to your face. She doesn't yeah. care. Like, I like that kind of attitude. Yeah, I'm with you with Beyonce. I was a big fan of hers when she was in Destiny's Child with, like, 11 ladies. Yes. And then... Now I don't. I'm. I'm not. The realest really moment they ever had was when Solange hit him in the elevator. Like that was like. <laughs> I'm like, that's what we want to see. We, we ever can relate. Found out what happened there? He cheated on her 100. He went on David Letterman and he talked about his indiscretions. They got into therapy. They're much better. He almost lost his family. Yeah, that was when they were real. And now Solange they're not was real. like, stop fucking with my sister. I like to apologize on behalf of all men out there that. Even Beyonce can get cheated on. Right. It just shows you, like, I think women are, are doing savages. a lot of cheating, too. I, I think. Yeah. You don't but you guys to... are way better at it. Be sneaky as fuck. Oh, my God. Are we really? Oh, <laughs> Yes. Okay. Okay. Women are way better at cheating than men. Absolutely. Um, okay. That's good to know. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio got smacked in the face with a volleyball. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> good. Having, the 44-year-old apparently is an, a volleyball enthusiast paparazzi were there he gets smacked in the face Good. with a volleyball really you're not a leo fan i mean he's a great actor but i'm jealous of him he's dated every hot woman of ever. a lot of people suspect that he's actually so, homosexual him. i don't just think a front. so maybe why would you ever get married if you were him you know you can't keep any vow i mean you're the hottest guy in hollywood he should take over hugh hefner's you know playboy yes. mansion he don't have the swag like Hugh though you rest his soul hell no hugh was smooth Hugh was 80-some years old and could pull any lady. Oh. That's gangster. Have you, did you read all those stories when they would all write memoirs of how they all had to like ha try to have sex with him and he like could never keep it hard, but uh, they all had to like sit around and watch and cheer him on? Was he pre-Viagra? Like, <laughs> Wasn't Viagra out when he Yes, was... but he couldn't even keep it going with Viagra, with and they'd Viagra? all have to cheer him on. They'd be like, come on, half. Shit. All that money? Come on, Keep half. it up. There's, keep it up. There's <laughs> got to be some drugs he could have. Here's a popsicle stick. Just <laughs> tie it on. Tie it on to that half. Can you imagine trying to have sex with that old crotchety thing? Oh, uh, mm -mm. this I is. Mean, a, I couldn't do it. That's him. Yeah, oh. smacked it? in the face. This there is he is. It? Yeah, but yeah, they don't show the after. I mean, the guy that's got like funny. knocked in the face. That's it, though. I thought it was gonna be something bigger. This looks normal. He just missed the he ball, would be smacked a volleyball his face. Player too. It's so <laughs> fitting. He's a volleyball guy. He's so hot. Yeah. Still, you think? Yeah, I don't think absolutely. he's aged well. No. I don't think he looks. Like, I, I feel mm. like he's aged like he's living. Like, he's out, he's partying. He yes. kind of looks like that to me, Well, personally. yeah, I mean, I mean, my God, this guy's probably on a Coke bender for two or three months <laughs> at a time. I think he looks fabulous for that. This dude, I mean, my God, you're up all night having sex, doing drugs, you're the biggest hector in Hollywood. It's I mean, not a bad life if you can land it, I guess. Hell no. But it looks pretty good for that. Uh, last one, were you a fan of Dog the Bounty Hunter in that show? Beth Chapman, um, we, we told you at the start of this podcast, but it was breaking news earlier today that she's passed away at 51 from lung oh, cancer. She did Very pass. sad. I knew yeah. She was sick. Very that's sad. sad. Um, that show has been off the air for, didn't they get in trouble for something? I feel like, and that's why the show was pulled. Did he do some racist stuff? I kind of yes. think he did. I feel like he, feel like did. he did. Yeah. Well, actually, I say that. I don't really remember, but I, I feel like there was something there. Yeah, I don't know. But it's sad regardless. You know, you never want to see anyone pass, yeah, especially how young she was. under those circumstances. She and how young she was, for throat sure. Throat cancer. Smoker. She was a big part of that show, too, I remember vaguely. That, um, you know, it was it, he was a star, for sure, but she was, like, part of the business and all that. Oh, so. yeah. I mean, those two were out there supposedly catching people that skipped bail or whatever. Thoughts and prayers out to her. Before we go, can I uplift the program a little bit? After oh, that I feel sad, like we've ended after on that a sad, sad news, note. can I just uplift us? Anything I, you want, of I course. I always said, if I got a shot to be on this show, I would profess my star crush. <laughs> AJ is my star crush. What? Oh! True story. Someone Actually, asked me. you two are a really so, good We're very couple. similar, right? <laughs> I know what Someone like. asked me one day who my star crush was, and I'm going through all these celebrities in my mind, like Rihanna's and whatever, and I'm like, no. And I kept finding flaws, and I was like, you know what? The next superstar yeah. is AJ anyway. <laughs> it is true. So technically, <laughs> she can be my star crush because she's on the cusp of being superstar. She is going to be so famous. I was just going to correct you that I am no star. Oh, it's coming. That was a thing. It is coming. It's it, coming. That's why I'm sticking around. <laughs> it's, in fact, <laughs> no, it's, that's why. it's overdue. I mean, I don't blame her. Thank you, Travis. You're it's so overdue. Oh, my God. Yeah. Isn't she amazing? Best.
She is. She really is. Do you guys want to make out? Like, what's going on? <laughs> no, we're both in. Both in relationships. Yeah. We don't believe in cheating. Sarah, yeah. you are always like the devil on my shoulder. Well, here's the I thing. Swear. Like, here's the thing. What people don't know behind the scenes, of course, is Travis is here at Podcast Village, AJ. Yeah. And these two are the most, like, conservative fucking we human are, beings. We really not, get along a lot. Not in politics, but, like, <laughs> in anything. Like, I'm over here trying to have sex with Fred, yeah. too. And they're like, Fred, <laughs> like, oh, my God, oh, God. Why are you trying gross. to do Fred? I'm like, you two, get <laughs> so out of the way. True. They're like, it's so inappropriate how you and Fred act. I'm like, really? I feel like that's like, you guys are. We're so we're very you're similar. so prim and we're proper. Cons- yeah. We're not prim we're not and proper. We just we're are just th- that's too much. Like yeah. he's too fucking he's much. Too much. I want to see that one pound dick. Like <laughs> I cannot wait. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't do it because, like, you guys always are always like, oh, Sarah, that's so inappropriate. You've got a man. You're getting married. I'm like, I don't care. Fred, whip it out on this show. I can't <laughs> wait to see it. <laughs> I want a live stream pay-per-view for, with him. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. often have to tell my mom. She's like, what was the show about today? I tell her the one topic that we talked about that was, like, semi-clean. Yes. I'm like, we talked about things men like. I mean, these are the things. Uh. No, you and Travis need to have a show together. <laughs> and it's just, like, everything yeah. clean is what it can be about. It can be like... <laughs> You guys don't like you don't like anything. We can we have raunch right. sides R- exactly, and that but comes when? out Friday, Saturday night. Yeah. We'll be like wasted at the club. Right, right, right. But For we'll, two minutes, you guys are like, oh, raunch. oh, what would we do with Leonardo DiCaprio? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know what's funny? <laughs> Your ass has raunch sides too. You're like, why is no one handing me the blunt? Why is no one <laughs> handing me a line? I'm like, bitch, because you go to bed at 8 p.m. Like, you have raunch sides too. You're only on from 8 to 8, which she is when no hours. parties. <laughs> yes. I do. Raunch office hours. Raunch <laughs> office hours, which is 8 from 8. And that's about it. So that's if someone it. shows up to her house at midnight, she's like, I'm nope. closed, bitch. I'm nope. sucking at dick. The, cl- <laughs> the, the, it's true. the store's closed. Now, I want to see Fred's schlong at 11 a.m. At 12 p.m. <laughs> like 11 a.m. If Fred would whip out that one pounder at 11, that would be like my perfect day. Then I can then I can wrap it up at 4. Yeah. Did you ask him to Yo, do that it, when he was here? Uh, no, she took, her shirt I, off. she took her shirt off. I, I took remember. my shirt off. He got very excited. Then we went and had drinks because I was like, we should have a serious XM sex show together, you know, because oh, I wanted to pitch them. Like the new love line. Wow. But I think Fred's almost like too out there because, like, you know, there is no real advice. It's just like, all right, <laughs> let's just all sit on each other's faces. And I'm like, Fred, but we've got to give people tangible. Do you want to start now? <laughs> should we start later? Oh. And then, so then he was just telling me about his one pound dick and he was like, you know, you could come back to my house, you could see the dick. I'm like, I know I could, but I'd I told really Sarah to share to her location because I was ready to go pick her drunk ass up. Can I just, can I ask <laughs> something? There's a lot of females in here. I just want to know as a guy, when a guy brags about his dick. I want to see it. I always feel like they come up They're short. overcompensating. Right? Really? Am I wrong? Oh, like so I've what? never Okay, so when we put Fred's bragged. dick on a scale and it's a little shy of a pound, where, where, what are we going to well, say listen, here? I, first of all, I don't know about Fred's anything, <laughs> especially the dick. But <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, as a dude, when I hear another dude like, I got a one pound dick. Really? <laughs> Do you? Is that right? I think it is. I think they talk a really big game. And yeah, it just goes along like, with his character. Well, yeah. You know, unlike you two who would close your eyes, I will look and I will find <laughs> out. Like, I will find out. These two will be like, oh. Turn the oh. lights off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turn the music down, please. <laughs> and uh, that's the thing. So, anyway. Well, I, thank God we have you, Sarah, to stare at that dick when the rest <laughs> of us are scared. And there's nothing wrong with prude sex. A strong missionary. Oh, here we go. Oh, Lord. Oh, you too. Fundamentally okay. sound. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys are so prim and proper. It's like, I don't even know. <laughs> you are. You two are men for each other. I've never seen Sarah in bed, so. I'm sure now it's let me, insane. I doubt it. I mean. You don't think, think so? No. If, I, think, I think she's I think insane. it would. I mean, it depends. Like again, it depends on the timing. Two o'clock in the afternoon? Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like, who's feeling <laughs> hot and steamy at that time? It's like th- th- we haven't even hit golden oh, hour yet. I can't get down after eight. It's so hard. That's Ellen's the thing. on, baby. You know what that means? <laughs> yeah. Like, wait, what? It's, yeah. it's three it's o'clock. True. No, I do my best work in the morning. Morning sex, I morning. would take on anybody. I could do I've anything in the morning. I, I appreciate morning sex. But eight actually. o'clock, no. So hold on, morning sex. Are you going face to face? Because there's morning breath. I know. So like, there's like positions specific for morning sex, in my opinion. I agree. Oh, I'm going face to face. You don't like, care? I mean, oh. she's going. She's going. Maybe to I am a prude. Her mouth. 
I'm like, like no. Nah. They're spitting in each other's mouths. She's my mouth retainer. I'm always like, I'd go down on Dan, no shower. I'm like, we no, like let's really? get dirty. She yes. likes the stink. You so Dan like- comes back from the gym. No problems there? None. Mm-mm. Christ. Yeah, you guys are so, see, look at you two. We I mean, my God, the sun's going to be right, the <laughs> chandelier, this, that. Okay, you two, please. Maybe we are prudes. It, you guys like, are. You're meant for each other. You guys are don't so Don't you want to like, smell the best of the person? Yeah, I, I, say, yeah. I say take no. your ass to the shower and come over here no. with a clean fact, ass. I talk shit. I'd be like, girl, get in the shower. I'm going to get in the shower. When we get out, it's <laughs> on. I'm going to tear it up. Yes. It'll be like a pregame. Well, no. Yes. We're getting married. I want to smell you at your worst. Okay. Uh, what are you going to smell like at 75 after you've pissed your pants? Like, you I want that. Because <laughs> we're keeping it hot. And Man. I told Dan, when we retire, we are moving to the fucking villages, and I'm getting herpes in Florida. <laughs> I can't wait. It's on. Yo, you know. You ask guys to go to Sex Island and I get am. the fuck off I of am. America. That's I a retirement swear. plan right there. We are there. going there, and we are becoming swingers. I Because there's no way it can do the same penis for life. No. No way. Who needs a 401k when you have pudding and herpes <laughs> at the old folks' sex home? I mean, now look, you've got to go to your shows. Yeah, You're I got amazing. a lot going on. You've got a lot going on. You're so awesome. Thank, Thank you for you. being You are great on this show. Thank I can't you. believe it's taken us this long to have well, you Well, that's on. your fault. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just call that what it is. You've got to come back. Travis Thomas Experience. Check him out. Santana Moss Show. We absolutely love these guys. Thank you for listening to the Hey Cheers. Brace Pod. We'll see you guys.